The new Heroic Plus system is here and we finally have all the answers for what's going to be in the new Alpha Dungeon equivalent for Cataclysm. The name is Elemental Rune Dungeons and this season is the season of Protocol Inferno. Let me go over everything we need to know about how the dungeon system is in its current state, how difficult it is, what rewards you can expect to get and how quickly you can get them. Protocol Infernal is just like the previous iterations, triggered by channeling on a floating element, just like in Wrath. All five in the group will have to do it, just make sure that it gets done before you start clearing the dungeon. The difficulty is tuned around having an item level of 346 and is, as such, not very difficult content. Every mob in the instance is buffed with a 100% increased HP and with a 25 increased damage buff. But if you're someone who is keeping up to date with your gearing in the current patch, then you will absolutely stomp this content. That being said, the higher health pool on some of the bosses made them quite slow compared to what you may be used to. The last boss in Grim Batol took over 2.5 minutes despite the group having quite decent DPS. There is no new affix like there was in Wrath of the Lich King, so it's really just a matter of doing the same content that we did during the launch of Cataclysm but slightly harder. With that said, the difficulty is extremely forgiving. After running a few of them on my DK on my warrior, I decided to give the good old Cloth Yanni some love. Tanking the Heroic Plus Dungeons with a 355 item level blood DK that was strictly relegated to wearing cloth gear was no problem, and never really came close to dying. Most tanks, regardless of spec, will have no issue with this content, assuming they have at least some understanding of how to press their spells. It's only the original heroic dungeons that get the Protocol Inferno treatment, and thus Zulaman as Lagrub gets left untouched. Since reputation is for most people not really a factor at this point, try to skip as many mobs as possible to speed up the process. Priests with Mind Sooth are extremely good for this kind of content. Okay, so why would we do the content? Well, it comes down to rewards. All the things you'll be able to get from the new system will come from a new vendor that trades in a new currency called Fisher Stone Fragments. These fragments will drop from the new bosses in the new dungeons. Each boss will drop two, with the final boss dropping five. Keep in mind that for the final boss to drop five, all other bosses in the instance must be dead, which will be important to keep in mind for dungeons like Thrones of the Tides and Halls of Origination. It will most likely be the most efficient to not skip bosses when farming for fragments. Assuming each dungeon will have around four bosses on average, one dungeon run will net you around 11 fragments. With these fragments, you can buy Drake of the North Wind, Vitria Stone Drake, and Drake of the South Wind, which is quite nice because Lord knows I would not be out farming the old dungeons to get him. But more importantly, you'll be able to pick up some of the best gear in the game from this vendor. First, you'll be able to buy the normal version of the tier 11 head and shoulders. For previous purposes, this is nice, but more importantly, if you're a rat paladin looking to pick up the tank 4 piece for pre pull snapshotting, then that is made all easier with this new system. These cost 60 fragments per token. Second, all of the non-weapon drops from Nefarian and Sinestra will also be available at the vendor. Tanks who have been passed up on their biz loot from Sinestra because of DPS Prio should be very happy with this. Death Knights who are looking to use trinkets without on-use or on-hit effects in the next tier should also look to pick up Shard of Woe for snapshotting their army with the haste effect before pull. Each of the Sinestra items will cost you 80 fragments, with the Nefarian items costing 60 fragments. In addition to loot from those two bosses, some of the highly valuable trinkets, like Heart of Rage and Symbiotic Worm, have also been added to the vendor. Seeing as Heart of Rage is the best trinket for the entirety of Firelands for a lot of people, I'm sure that many people are happy to see that change. Some notable trinkets that are not included are Fall of Mortality and Theralian's Mirror, which will be best options for some people in Firelands. Each trinket will cost 50 fragments and will be relatively easy to pick up. The big thing that a lot of heroic raiders will be happy about is the addition of loot boxes. I mean semi-deterministic satchels. All non-weapon items from Throne of the Four Winds have been added as satchels. Once you open the satchel, you will get an item with a combination of two different stats. How many combinations you can get will depend on the item, but for Blood Death Knight for example, that is a sucker for off the fault line, which gives haste and mastery, we have a 25% chance of getting the combination we want. To compensate for the fact that we're likely to have to farm out several of these satchels to get what we want, they only cost 28 fragments. Which is kind of nice, as we could get lucky, and while we gamble on what we want, 
We could also pick up a combination that may be better for specific fights, like how you prefer Mastery over Haste and Crit as a mage or a Lysrosaur. Okay, so what are my thoughts on the system? Frankly, I'm a little bit disappointed. The rewards are nice and all, and I'll definitely be picking up quite a few of the things on both my main and my alts. But frankly, running these new heroics is exactly like running the old heroics with a similar difficulty level due to the higher item level, even in pre-raid gear. In Wrath, we at least had some affixes that made them feel slightly different and that you were doing new content. While some of them made the game worse, I'm looking at you, the Nexus, it at least made it feel like you were not just doing the same old, same old. Affixes like the ones we had in Halls of Stone and Halls of Lightning were absolutely perfect in the way that they spiced up the way you approached the dungeon and gave you a reward for playing correctly while penalizing you for not keeping up a high speed. My delusional self was hoping for a system that more resembled Mythic Plus. But oh boy, we got just the opposite. I've now done 5 out of the 7 bosses in the Firelands Raid Guide series, with the 6th being on the way. So make sure to subscribe to stay up to date with the guides being released. I also stream over in Twitch, and with Firelands coming out, I'll be streaming the crap out of that. Make sure to join my Discord as well, where I have a bunch of resources, help out with long review, and just have a good time. But that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching, until next time.